Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry MO. So this topic is Oral Health Assessment Form. So the name gives an idea. It assesses the oral health completely. So usually a part of oral health can be assessed using various oral indices such as oral hygiene index, plaque index, gingival index, bleeding index, dental caries index or periodontal index such as Russell index, CPI, CPITN, Dean's fluorosis index. So many indices we have. So each index assesses a part of oral health, but this is a form or pro forma which assesses the entire oral health. So it is a very common tool used by the research people to assess oral health and it is very universally accepted, it is very valid and very reliable because it has put forward by none other than WHO that is World Health Organization in 1997. So this is not the latest version we have 2013 version also but it was started in 1971 that is the first edition came then the 1977 second edition then 1986 then the fourth edition this is fourth edition and we have recently the fifth edition one too so it is getting updated uh, by decade or every decade so sometimes it is updated twice in a decade then it came the third edition 1997 fourth edition then it was a longer period and it was recently updated in 2013 the updation because there was a gradual change in the pattern of disease and they used to modify the index which they included in the assessment form because in 97 the periodontal indices was measured by Russell index but later it was CPI index with loss of attachment so that is how they modified it similarly there are lots of difference between the fourth edition and fifth edition that I will be uh, explaining you in another session okay. so in a one patient or two patient or a very few patient we can use case histories that is the return format the qualitative data but if we are going for a research purpose or a conducting a survey on thousand people or two thousand people or we are doing the same in many places or many states or districts or countries the case history reliability and its reproducibility is a big question so we need to have a fixed criteria to assess the oral health that is how this came into existence it has got only quantitative data because we are entering everything in numbers so in normal case history we take general information then the chief complaint history of presenting illness medical history and other dental history then we go to the extra oral examination we have TMJ lymph nodes any other lesions then we go to intraoral soft tissue then heart tissue and finally the dental caries status the periodontal status the malocclusion status or the prosthetic status or prosthetic need and the enamel hypoplasia or the dental fluorosis so all things we are assessing in a case history the same thing we are doing here but everything in a number format so we are quantifying it we have fixed criteria so we can easily reproduce it we can use it anywhere at any time there is always a reliability because we have fixed criteria so if it is in a normal case history scenario there are chances of high uh, variability between the examiners or between the researchers or dentist so in order to avoid all those problems we use oral health assessment since it's from WHO there is no question of reliability or validity it is all so the validity and reliability is already proven so it is very widely used to assess oral health mainly in research purpose so we'll start with the oral health assessment form fourth edition that is 1997 so this is the WHO oral health assessment form 1997 you can see it has got many blank spaces totally we have 180 blank spaces where we need to enter alphabets or numbers okay so everything what we enter in a quantified 
manner so we have the country here then uh, the year month day where the examination is being conducted identification number of the person the examiner whether it is the first or second whether it is original or duplicate then the name of the person then its date of birth we need to enter year and month then age and years then the gender male or female then ethnic group occupation so i'll come up one by one so i just have a glance on it occupation then geographic location then we have the extra oral examination we have the lesions or tmj problems then comes the oral mucosa problem then the enamel hypoplasia or fluorosis then the periodontal status cpi and loss of attachment then comes the dentition status that is mainly the caries and its associated problem then the prosthetic status and prosthetic need then we have the malocclusion that is dentofacial anomalies and finally the need for immediate care and referral so ultimately it is exactly like a case history but in a different format so everything we enter here is number mostly number and sometimes alphabets so comparison is very easy because we are not writing any sentence so subjective variation is very very minimal so high reliability is the a uh, striking feature of world oral health assessment form so we'll start with the first column that is uh the column number 1 to 4 or the boxes 1 to 4 boxes 1 to 4 is uh the country code so actually investigator should write the name of the country in which the survey was conducted in capital letters okay and boxes 1 to 4 are reserved for the who code for the country that is for who code the code 1 to 4 then the year and month when the examination or the research is being carried out so if it is uh, 2013 or 2021 then month uh, jan then we have day 15 so mostly we can go for 21 01 that is the box 5 to 8 then we can put 1 and 5 on boxes 9 and 10 then identification number uh, it depends on the number of patients if we have thousand patients and the first person should be 001 if we have 100 patients it will be 001 if we have just 10 patients it will be 01 and the examiner sometimes uh, we may have many examiners because the study might be very huge so that time the number of examiner should be entered in that box number 15 and sometimes for checking reliability the same performer will be duplicated so that time we need to write original or duplicate only one okay then we can write uh, the name of the person in bold letters then similarly date of birth year uh, if it is 1986 may month we can write 8 6 and 0 5 and 21 and 22 boxes are age and years that is can write 34 34 then the gender 1 or 2 that is in the box number 23 then the ethnic group uh, each country has different different ethnic groups if we have a standard criteria uh, ethnic groups we can enter that ethnic group number into that box otherwise we can leave it blank or we can just enter 9 means not recorded occupation also if we have a standard criteria in your country you can enter that in india it is based on kupuswami scale most commonly used so kupuswami scale occupation criteria we can use so i will be doing another video on kupuswami scale so that uh, standardized code we can use then the geographic location so location also we can have 0 to 98 locations we need to list out prior to the investigation and wherever the study is being conducted we need to enter that location It can be a school a village or any place 
if it is not entering we need to enter 9 and 9 that is not recorded since we have two boxes we are entering 9 and 9 then the location type it is urban peri urban or rural so in uh, WHO assessment form there are criteria how a place be urban peri urban and rural so according to that we need to enter in box number 28 in other data if we have any uh, special data on uh, smoking or uh, like uh, or fluorosis or any other uh, data if we have we can enter that data so if we have any data on the tobacco usage or the level of fluoride in water or the sugar intake so any such thing we have uh, we can enter in box number 29 and 30 then contraindication is there we can mention it as 1 or 0 in clinical examination uh, we are just assessing the patient's condition extra orally that is any lesions any ulcers present on head neck limb nose cheeks or any position if anything is there just go through this and find out the location and enter the number in box number 32 suppose if patient's upper and lower lip abnormality is there we can enter 6 in box number 32 if it is not there we can just enter 9 that is not recorded if patient has uh, no problem we can enter 0 regarding the temporomandibular joint so it is just like a case history first we entered the demographic data then we collected the extra oral so now we are in temporomandibular joint assessment so we have symptoms and signs any symptoms we enter one in box number 33 no symptom zero if the patient is in a condition where the examination is not possible can enter nine in signs we have three options clicking tenderness or reduced jaw mobility that is 34 35 and 36 boxes so if any signs are there we can enter one in that respective box if the patient is okay we enter zero if we are not able to record it we can enter nine now we have the oral mucosa and its location so we have two uh, sets of uh, boxes that is 37 38 39 on left side 40 41 and 42 on right side so left side we need to enter the conditions of oral mucosa now we are into intraoral cavity okay on the right side we have locations so on a horizontal manner so on a horizontal manner we need to enter number with respect to the condition here and on right side where it is located so on a row wise means the condition and its location so we can enter three conditions and locations so that is box number 37 to 42 okay so we have one uh, example here so you can easily assess it 2 2 4 1 so in 37 we have 2 that means leukoplakia and 4 means buccal mucosa so presence of leukoplakia on buccal mucosa again we have 2 and 1 that means leukoplakia on commissures then the next example you have 116 here 126 here so one is malignant tumor that is oral cancer which is present on the location vermilion sorry commissure and lips then we have candidiasis on tongue so we can add additional boxes if the patient has more lesions okay so on left side boxes we have the conditions on right side boxes we have the location so horizontally the lesion and its location so you can enter because here we have the malignant tumor mm, sorry leukoplakia that is 2 is leukoplakia that is a different position that is I mean different location buccal mucosa and commissure so you can repeat it 2421 that means presence of leukoplakia on commissure and buccal mucosa that is how you enter 
ಬಾಕ್ಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಟು ಫೋರ್ಟಿ ಟು ತರ್ಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಏಟ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ನೈನ್ ಆರ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫೋರ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ಟಿ ಒನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫೋರ್ಟಿ ಟು ಆರ್ ಲೊಕೇಶನ್ ನಾವು ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇನಾಮಲ್ ಅಪಾಸಿಟೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಹೈಪೋ ಪ್ಲೇಸಿಯಾ ಸೊ ಫಾರ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಮೆಷರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ವಿ ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಲರ್ನ್ ದ ಡೆವಲಪ್ಮೆಂಟಲ್ ಡಿಫೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇನಾಮಲ್ ಇಂಡೆಕ್ಸ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಡಿ ಡಿ ಇ ಇಂಟೆಕ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ so this index is being used to measure the enamel hypoplasia or opacities so we need to learn that index according to that we have eight categories that is normal demarcated opacity diffuse opacity hypoplasia other defects demarcated and diffuse demarcated opacity with hypoplasia and diffuse opacity hypoplasia all three conditions so whatever is there you need to enter in the tooth number premolar to premolar that is upper premolar to right to left and lower first molars so this is the teeth where the enamel opacities or hypoplasia is mostly affected so that is how this is selected now we have the dental fluorosis so for dental fluorosis the dean's fluorosis index is being used dean's fluorosis index so we need to know how the dean's fluorosis index calculation is done that is the highest two numbers will be selected so it is a full mouth index so all teeth will be measured based on the criteria then we will enter the scores okay suppose this is 0.5 this is 1 2 1 1 1 2 this is 3 3 4 1 2 1 similarly all teeth will be entered and we need to select the highest two values so highest two value here is 3 and 4 3 and 4 is the highest two values suppose if we have 4 here again so it will be 4 and 4 highest value so highest two values okay so here it will be 4 here it will be 3 and 4 so in this case the dean's fluorosis index is 4 in this case dean's fluorosis index is 3 if the dissimilar value is there the lowest will be taken suppose if it is 2 and 4 the score will be 2 the least value will be taken so this is a criteria the highest two scores will be taken if the same scores are there we'll take the one definitely it will be the mean or the average so 8 by 4 8 by 2 it will be 4 here we are not taking the average but we are taking the least score that is how the dean's fluorosis index is entered now we have cpi index that is for periodontal measurement with loss of attachment okay this is done by cpi prop the entire questionnaire is or the oral health assessment is done by cpi prop so this category is for basically the pocket measurement and this one is for loss of attachment it is a quadrant wise uh, we need to learn the cpi prop and its type its uh, basic uh, measurement we have 0 1 2 3 4 x and 9 healthy bleeding calculus then the pocket 4 to 5 mm then pocket more than 6 mm in 4 to 5 mm uh can see the picture here the score 3 that is cpi score 3 means the black band is partially visible because the pocket depth is between 4 to 5 mm the black band is between 3.5 to 5.5 mm so it is not completely immersed in the pocket because some part of black band will be visible because it has up to 5.5 mm marking but the pocket pocket is up to 5 mm but whereas a score 4 cpi score 4 means pocket is 6 mm so black band will be completely invisible because it has only up to 5.5 mm marking that is 3.5 to 5.5 mm so it will be completely invisible so that is how we differentiate score 3 and 4 if it is partly visible score 3 completely invisible score 4 now the loss of attachment loss of attachment this cpi is measured from gingival margin gingival margin to sulcus base of the sulcus but loss of attachment is measured from cj cj to base of sulcus so sometimes you may get a condition where the cpi score is 2 and you get the loss of attachment score 3 in case of recession because it is measured from cj so again 
you insert the probe to the base of circus then correspond the score with respect to the CEJ will be measured. So if it is coming within CEJ uh, it will be score 1 uh, that is a black band within CEJ 1 then if it is between the lower ring and upper band of upper limit of black band is 2 then between the rings it is 3 and beyond the ring it is 4. X is excluded sextant if there is no tooth uh, which is in a measurable condition we need to exclude that sextant so that is loss of attachment now we have the dentition status and treatment needs so here you can see this is for maxillary teeth this is for mandibular teeth we have three rows here one is for crown one is for root one is for treatment and we are going to measure the caries presence using CPI probe that is a probe with ball tip not the sharp probe or explorer so as I said we have three rows first one is for crown then for root and one for treatment both for upper and lower so you have the teeth present here that is 1a to 2a 3a to 4a then we have the deciduous teeth 55 to 65 75 to 85 and we have cords on the right side that is a b c d e then f g and t for that is for primary teeth crown there is no code for primary teeth root now we have permanent tooth crown that is 0 2 9 and 1 t also is there then root 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 is not there then 7 8 there is no trauma then 9 again we have treatment status again 0 p f 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 now for uh, let's take an example what we need to do is just I'm not drawing all the tooth just take an example okay so this is the crown status root status and treatment uh, basically we take uh, permanent teeth sometimes if we have uh, patients with deciduous teeth we can uh, replace uh, 1 1 position by 5 1 or 1 1 by 5 2 similarly so now we are taking permanent dentition so I just put it as 1 1 1 2 1 3 1 4 and 1 5 okay let's take an example 1 1 there is no caries on crown okay so there is no caries on crown I put 0 and root what I uh, enter here that is root without any exposure that is completely covered there is no recession there is no problem completely okay so I put 8 here because tooth is not exposed with respect to the root portion crown is anyway exposed so we just need to check whether caries is present or not no caries means 0 8 now it doesn't require any treatment so I put 0 so it means 0 8 0 means no caries in crown the root is not exposed and it doesn't need any treatment suppose 1 2 is having caries so I put 1 that means caries is present on crown but the root is not exposed there is no recession I put 8 but it needs treatment so I uh, consider a one surface filling so I put 1 if it needs two surface or more filling I should put 2 suppose 1 3 is again decayed I put 1 and there is presence of recession that is root is exposed but there is no caries with respect to the root so I should put 0 because the root is exposed when crown is exposed I put 0 root is exposed I put 0 if root is not exposed or in a normal condition I should put 8 so again it needs uh, treatment one or two surface filling so I put one and one four is extracted due to caries so cord is four so in root status we don't need to put anything okay sometimes it needs a, uh, implant therapy so I'm going to put eight because in treatment status there is no implant so we have uh, 7 8 are empty spaces so I can use 7 or 8 so I just put 7 and 7 I need to enter implant and that code is fixed 
in 1.5 1.5 the case is different the root is extracted for orthodontic reason so that is 5 any other reason other than caries root again we just put a hyphen and for orthodontic uh, we don't need any treatment let's take an example here 2 1 2 2 2 3 2 4 just take 2 8 so 2 8 is impacted okay both crown is not exposed root is not exposed so in that case I should put 8 and 8 because crown is not exposed root is not exposed something is not exposed we put 8 and if it needs extraction we are going to put 6 because in codes the 6 is for extraction and 2 3 2 3 there is a caries in crown there is caries in root and it needs two surface filling so here one thing is evident that is the root is exposed so without an exposed tooth we cannot explore the caries status using a probe so we need to have a visibility in root side so one means or zero means there is recession or root is exposed just make sure that presence of caries if caries is there one so one is code for caries okay suppose two is having a filling on crown surface that means three that is filled without any decay and root is not exposed eight no treatment needed two two there is a secondary caries in crown that case we need to enter two that is filling with decay crown is uh, root is not exposed so put eight and zero sorry uh, caries is there so we need to go for better we go for uh, pulp care and restoration so we put five in two four uh, there is a severe caries which needs rct and crown so caries anyway it will be only one uh, and root portion is also having carry so one we are going to put uh, pulp care and restoration therapy for that so we are going to enter five so you can see there is no criteria is repeated so you can have many options like this so this is how you enter crown status is different root status is different and treatment status is different this is one tooth this is entire crown of on arch entire root of upper arch entire treatment status of upper arch so one means caries two means filling with caries three means filling without caries four means missing due to caries five means missing uh, without caries or any other reasons suppose two six is having a pressure sealant so we need to enter six that means there is presence of fissure sealant we don't need to enter anything z hyphen or we can also put eight because uh, the root is not exposed anyway and if we have uh, suppose if this is 2 7 and there is presence of bridge so if bridge is there or crown is there already we can put 7 7 and 0 because crown 7 and 7 and if 1 1 is trauma we can just put T and it definitely needs treatment 1 or 2 3 4 up to the condition up to based on that condition okay and if we are in a state where we are not able to record anything so we just put nine that is the dentition status okay so i told you in treatment we have eight and uh, seven if we have any additional treatment required for that particular patient we can enter that to uh, suppose uh, if patient needs uh, rpd or fpd or anything that sort of we can use that seven and eight codes uh, caught in treatment status that is dentition status and treatment need now we have prosthetic status and prosthetic need it is very simple prosthetic status is a present condition so what is present in that patient so we have box number 162 and 163 so just check in upper arch is there any processes suppose we have uh, one bridge and one partial denture uh, in upper arch we need to enter four if just a partial denture three if we have one bridge then score one 
then if you have more than one bridge two and if we have a cd five similarly on the lower arch next we have the prosthetic need now we learned prosthetic status prosthetic need is nothing but the, what the patient requires now so if patient uh, similarly we have two boxes 164 and 165 if patient needs one unit prosthesis we enter one wherever upper or lower if patient needs a full prosthesis that is four patient needs combination of one or multi unit prosthesis that is three so depending upon uh, the requirement we enter the number in 164 165 that is separately for upper and lower arch now we have uh, the malocclusion status that is dentofacial anomalies so we have many uh, boxes here 166 to 176 where as you see the picture here we need to assess the uh, crowding the spacing diastema everything in millimeter uh, but the crowding and spacing we have category 0, 1, 2. Uh, the rest everything like diastema, the irregularity in maxilla and mandible, the overjet in maxilla and mandible, then vertical open bite. So all these uh, will be measured in millimeter as you see the picture uh, using the CP iProp. Then we have the anterior posterior molar relationship. Again that is having 0, 1, 2. So finally, the DAI index should be calculated uh, with the formula as uh, mentioned here. That formula is little complicated. Uh, we need a lot of multiplication, uh, addition. So finally, we get uh, values. So depending upon that value, we will classify that patient into uh, DAI score less than 25, 26 to 30, 31 to 35, equal to or greater than 36. That is depending upon minor malocclusion, definite, severe and very severe malocclusion. So that is the DAI uh, scores. So this is uh, about the fourth edition. What, what happened to the fifth edition of oral health assessment? This DAI index is not there. So I'll be uh, putting into putting those differences in my next video. So this is uh, completely on the fourth edition. Okay. And lastly, we have the need for immediate care and referral. Uh, we need to um, understand the patient's condition, diagnose it, and we need to uh, put into life-threatening condition, pain or infection, or whatever it is. We need to enter that, and referral is required or not. That is a 180th box. So that is all about oral health assessment form. It is a very commonly uh, used assessment tool to uh, collect the oral health data it is a complete uh, data with respect to the soft tissue hard tissue general information and carry status periodontal status prosthetic status the malocclusion status so everything will be in a single format that is a quantitative format so it is very easy to tabulate uh, for statistical analysis unlike the qualitative data how we get using a case history the normal case history so i'll come up with the oral health assessment form 2013 in my next video and i'll put the difference of 97 that is the fourth and fifth edition there so hope you understood this you need to learn the dde index that is a developmental index for enamel hyperplasia dean's fluorosis index uh, for uh, fluorosis status then the CPI and loss of attachment index for periodontal status so then only uh, it will be easy for you to uh, record it properly and you need to be uh, well thorough with this dentition status because you need to have many combinations in dentition status and treatment needs okay so I'll come up with that video in my next session thank you